our tomato crop. This is Mai Tai, it's a cocktail tomato. This is an indeterminate tomato, which means that it doesn't get vegetative and then stop its growth and then produce fruit. It continues to, to grow for as long as we can provide nutrient to it. So this is the type of crop that's grown inside of a greenhouse and determinate tomatoes are grown out in the field. So we planted a 128 style plug into our Dutch bucket system. Perlite, we're using perlite as our substrate. It is 100% perlite. And it's irrigated through a emitter system, a low volume emitter system with spaghetti tubings that pr provides roughly four ounces per minute per plant. So this crop was, the seeds were sown in August. The plants were planted in late September. We started harvesting this crop in November and we will carry this crop through production until June. So today is the end of the week. This is Friday. So this is generally the day that I lower and lean and prune tomatoes for the weekend. And what we wanna do is you can see how far off the, our tomato is leaning from our vine twine. This is our vine twine and it's on a roller hook up at the top. This is how we maintain these crops. So as the, what happens is as the plant reaches the top of the trellis, I can pinch that side piece on the roller hook and it will let down one loop of stirring and lower my plant down. And then I will lean the plant over and that keeps it in a working area for me. And I have a very short trellis. Some of these trellis can get as, as high as 12 to 14 feet where you need a scissor lift or a ladder in order to work these plants. But as we go up, we're gonna add another clip to our string. So we talked about our vine clip. So here's our vine clip. And you can see that on our tomato plant, I avoid the fruit set. I do not wanna put any clips underneath my fruit stem because I don't want anything to damage that fruit stem. So we always wanna make sure that we're supporting our plant on a side leaf, a lateral that is that is going at an angle that will support the weight of this plant. And for tomatoes, we want to put a clip about every foot. So here's my fruit set. So I'm going to avoid here and I'm going to go up to the next leaf and there's my teeth. Okay, so I'm going to come up underneath and I'm going to clip right there. And as this plant grows up higher, this this leaf is going to support the weight of the plant. So these plants, they will continue to grow. And by the end of a nine month season, I could have a 30 foot vine that I'm having to maintain. So they will continue to put on suckers. So I come through the vine and I will look for any side shoots that come out, these side shoots, and they pop off very easily, okay, from this inner node. And we want to pop them off instead of cutting them if we can. So if we can pull them off at a young stage, then that leaves a very small wound on the plant that the plant can heal from. So I pull these small suckers off. So as I go up now, just like the cucumbers, we protect this main leader, this apical meristem. So this is my growing tip. I don't want to damage my tip. But if I do, for some reason, this next sucker down can take over for this plant. So I won't lose the plant for the rest of the season, but this sucker can take its place. So I never take those top suckers off until maybe next week. So I've got one and two that I will leave and my growing tip. So this is one of our fruit clusters and you can see that this one is, this is ready to be pruned. So we have our eight fruit that are already set and this is a perfect time to cluster prune we don't want the fruit too big because they'll have already had to determine what how big the fruit is going to be if we wait so this is excess fruit that we don't need on this cluster so i'm going to come through with clean snips and i'm going to snip that there and that is cluster pruning so today is will be our first harvest of this crop and you can see that we've lowered and leaned the plants but we keep the fruit off of the floor for the protection of the fruit for food safety reasons and we don't want to actually damage the fruit. So a vining tomato, an indeterminate tomato, they put on three leaves and a fruit set per week. So as I harvest this fruit off, I'm also going to take off the next three leaves and I can pop these off and if you have a vine that is very hard to get off. You don't want to damage the vine, so it is okay to cut it, but you want to cut it 
close to the plant so you don't leave stem um, that can potentially get diseased from that leaf. Okay, so I'm gonna leave this leaf still on so it can protect this next fruit cluster. And, but I'm gonna harvest this fruit off today. I'm Jordan Cooper. We're at Sugar Top Farms, my farm. Uh, we are in our tomato high tunnel. Uh, this is a 16 by 72 foot high tunnel. Uh, we have two varieties of tomatoes we're growing here. This is a, a custom uh, indeterminate cherry variety from Johnny's. Uh, specifically, we chose it uh, because it's resistant to uh, the white fly we've been struggling with for the past couple years. Um, so it's a um, pretty much a basic red cherry and uh, so far so good with that. And then we have a, um, a newer variety from Turkey, I believe, called Pink Smart, uh, also resistant to uh, white fly. And uh, this is a semi-determinant um, slicing tomato. And we're using a culiper system, which you can see here. And uh, it's our trellis system here. And it's a lower and lean system that hooks right onto our purlins at the top. And we can simply just squeeze the clips and lower them down and then move the clips over. So it's a lower and lean system. Um, we have had these in since the beginning of September. They're grafted on a multi-fort rootstock. And uh, yeah, they've been growing for about three months. We've been getting a harvest for about the past month now. And uh, they should continue going throughout the winter into the spring. Uh, for irrigation purposes, we're using uh, drip irrigation. This is about a two inch spacing. Mostly we're using a fertigation system with the drip line as well. So we're uh, getting some nutrients that way, primarily uh, fish emulsion, an organic kelp, and a uh, water-soluble uh, potash uh, formula. And uh, yeah, uh, soil-wise, everything is bare ground. Uh, so we added, obviously, uh, put some compost in here for organic matter, uh, nitrogen source. We added uh, uh, some gypsum for calcium, some a little bit of minor uh, nutrients as well.